It's a strange world. Black and white streets. Drops of water are falling. A snail crawls slowly. The sound of sirens in the distance. The only color in this world is a pink one-eyed bear. Not far away, a group of people in protective suits are busy taking away the bodies. Why was Shane lose her breath and did nothing? Early in the morning, Pinkman woke up and realized he had lost the love of his life forever. Devastated, Pinkman could only rely on White. White, holding his baby girl in his arms, calmly answered his phone and told him not to panic. It wasn't long before a cool guy showed up on Pinkman's doorstep. Mike, the city scavenger. Pinkman is obsessed with Jane's death. Mike came to clean up Pinkman's mess. Mike calmly enters the house and removes anything that could be detrimental to Pinkman. He quickly cleans up the crime scene and then he teaches Pinkman how to take a statement. Pinkman is too distraught over the loss of his lover to pay any attention to him. Say it. I woke up, found her, that's all I know. I woke up, I found her, that's all I know. Mike reminded Pinkman to repeat the same sentence and not to say anything else to the police. Then Mike left with Pinkman's drug money. Jane's father was ready to pick Jane up and take her to rehab, but he couldn't get through to her. When he got to the house, he saw an ambulance and a stretcher. He was separated from his daughter after only one night without seeing her. He looked at all this numbly and felt his mind go blank, not wanting to accept this reality. Pinkman is now being questioned by the police. Pinkman was confused when asked about Jane's date of birth. Jane's father answered these questions calmly and did not bother Pinkman, but it left the place like a walking dead. In contrast to Pinkman's pain, the White family is filled with joy. White Jr.'s fundraising account has received donations from all over the world, but the proud dumb son has no idea that it's his father's money. All in all, White's money is at least being exposed to the son. On the other hand, Hank was raising money for White, and the person who donated the most would get a Hank's homebrew. Then he talked about the drug case in town, which the police had been pursuing since Fatty's death. The death of a nobody is not worth the police's time, but what he was selling is. After Fatty's death, the town's blue magic disappeared overnight. Strangely enough, blue magic began to proliferate in every state except New Mexico, so it was obviously a big business. From this, he's certain that Heisenberg is still on the loose. After the meeting, the director introduces Hank to a couple of philanthropic entrepreneurs who have been longtime supporters of the D. Surprisingly, Gustavo was among them. The D's longtime patron was the city's biggest drug lord. What an irony! Gustavo of course, knew about White's relationship with Hank when he noticed Hank's donation box. Since the success of White Jr.'s fundraising website, he and his mother's greatest joy has been to watch the donation numbers bounce around on the computer. Why wasn't in the mood? Because after Jane's death, Pinkman disappeared. It wasn't long before Mike found Pinkman's location. It's a rundown slum with a bunch of junkies. They'll do anything to get a hit. Mike planned to handle the situation alone, but White insisted on going in. Fearing for Pinkman's safety, White was soon shocked. The room is filled with the walking dead, and even the air smells like crime. White finally found Pinkman in the corner. Completely depraved, Pinkman's habit is to face his pain with disillusionment, and no matter how much White shakes him, he can't wake him up. The first thing Pinkman did when he woke up was to hug him and start crying. I love you more than anything. White sent him to the best rehab in the area to get better, because White was going into surgery. If something happens to White, Saul will take care of Pinkman. After all, he has all of Pinkman's money. I deserve whatever happens. Jane's father came to Jane's room, trying to find her a brightly colored dress, but couldn't find one. Jane's closet was full of dark clothes. All he could do was look at what his daughter had left behind and grieve. And this painting in Jane's bedroom has the feel of a life entangled in illusion and darkness and drawn closer to the abyss. There's a cute little bear in the upper right hand corner. And the next shot is of White's house. He's arranging the clothes of his newborn daughter. Two daughters, one life, one death. Maybe it's the turn of demand. White Jr. spends his days off fundraising websites. Skylar says her sister Marie has a friend at the paper who heard about White Jr.'s website and wanted to come in for an afternoon interview. This annoys White because it's embarrassing to thank non-existent donors in front of the camera. As the afternoon wore on, White Jr. faced the camera and expressed his love for his father and said that White was a great father. It's ironic that White's guilt is paired with his son's praise. Today is the day of White's surgery. He's a little disoriented from the anesthetic. Skylar asked him if he had a cell phone, and he asked in a daze, which cell phone are you talking about? And that put Skylar in a really bad mood. Skylar guessed White was having an affair, but now was not the time to talk about it. His surgery went well this time. At that follow-up appointment, Skylar kept asking the doctor if White was capable of living on his own at this stage. After receiving an affirmative answer from the doctor, Skylar gave a knowing smile. When they got home, Skylar told White to move out into days while she went to Marie's house for today's because she thought White's life was full of lies. Looking at a confused White, Skylar finally asked him where the nearly $300 000 for chemotherapy and surgery came from. 
Weiss' last lie about going to see his mother when he was really out in the wilderness cooking drugs was also exposed. After all the lies were exposed, White was left speechless. When White decides to come clean, Skylar leaves without looking back. White is frustrated that his wife doesn't understand his dedication to his family. Wearing a pink outfit, White was sitting by the pool when suddenly there was a loud bang in the sky. White looked up in panic and saw two airplanes colliding in the sky. The wreckage of the airplanes was like fireworks falling to the ground. It turns out that after Jane's death, Jane's father went back to work. As an airline dispatcher, his job required calm and caution, but all his reasoning was clouded by the loss of his daughter. He made a terrible mistake in commanding an airplane, and read the code name JN as Jane. Then, in an instant, the sky was ablaze with fire and smoke. No one on board survived. Pieces of the plane fell in all directions. A pink bear crashed into White's pool. White walked up to the pool. White's twisted form was reflected in the water. As the pink bear slowly sinks, the scene turns black and white. The black and white also suggests that the bear's owner has been killed. Jane, who at first amazed us, died to the regret of millions of viewers. She had charmed Pinkman, but couldn't be with him for the rest of his life. Similarly, White's hard work in first half of his life showed him how despairing and unremarkable life can be. White's morality crumbles when he is stricken with cancer. He became fearless and found his art in cooking drugs. The process of cooking drugs is his self-identification with his true self. The biggest thing I can say about this drama is that it's all about the inevitability of fate.